Christ. This is the last part of 7.1. It's instead of Venn, we will still do a little bit with two set Venn diagrams and we'll get to those examples when we get to them. But for the most part, we're going to leave Venn diagrams behind. Right? What we're going to do instead is your table will be organized. Instead of a Venn diagram, it'll be organized in a table. Right? So you have to be able to read your problems from a table instead of a Venn diagram. All right, so I'm going to go through a few examples of counting using the table. All right, specifically looking at and and or cases, which those are the two big ones. Again, the union rule and the intersection rule are the ones that you have to be careful of, whether it's a Venn diagram or a table case. All right, so first example, this was a table pulled um, from the spring 2007 fact book. All right, broken down by graduate students, undergraduate students, male and female students, and then their totals. All right, so there's there's the table that we're given. All right, so the last row is your totals, last column is your totals, and then everything in between. All right, so the first question, I'm almost in a random spot, is asking for, uh, suppose you randomly choose a student who attended ISU in the spring of 2007. Suppose you went back and you randomly pulled the name of a student who attended in 2007. How many possible students can you choose from if you want to select a female graduate student? So that's what you're looking for. And so this is an and statement. I want the number of students that are in the female group and the graduate group, right? They're graduate students, female graduate student. All right, so it's the overlap between graduate students and female students. Well, that's this group here, right? That's the overlap between their graduate student and their female student. And so that's the and statement. And so if I were selecting, there were 1,581 possible students that land in that group out of my 20,104. All right, so that's the union if we have a table. All right, the next question, suppose that you randomly choose a student attending ISU, all right, so from the same table basically, how many possible students can you choose from if you want to select a female student or, and so the problem's changed. This was, I wanted both of those things, graduate and a female, so they had to have both in order to be in that category. This one, however, or changes things. They can be a female student who attended ISU in 2007 or... They can be a graduate student, all right? There are some female students who are graduate students, but there's some that are not. There are some graduate students that are male students, all right? And then there's some graduate students that are female students. And again, I want to negotiate those. And so or is always the one you have to be careful of, right? I need the number of female students or their graduates. Well, it's the number of female students plus the number of graduate students minus the number that are both, all right? Graduate student and female student. And so the or is the one I always have to be careful of. All right, so female students, there was a total of 11,569,000. ,000. Graduate students, there was a total of 2,449. But I don't want to count anybody twice. 1,581 of those were counted in both groups, right? When I totaled the female students, that 1,581 was in that total. When I totaled the graduate students, that 1,581 was a part of this total. So I have to make sure I subtract that 1,581 that were both, right? They landed in the female group and they landed in the graduate, right? This landed in both. I mean by both. And so I've got to subtract that so I don't count those 1,581 students twice. All right, so again, make sure it's just not new, it's just pulling numbers from a table. That's the only new part. So it, again, this process is the same. It's just I pulled the problem's numbers using my table totals versus a Venn diagram. All right, then you're careful. These are very large numbers, so you're careful when you add and subtract. So it should come out to 12,437 students out of my total that are either, some of them are female, and some of them are graduate students, right? They're either or, some of them are both, right? I got either or. 
All right, on your own, so practice on your own. There's, again, the or is the hard one, so I picked another or one for you to practice, undergraduate or male students. Make sure you're careful that you don't count male students who are undergraduates twice. Second table example, All right, so this is a second table example. So this one has an airline that had a thousand flights they were looking at. All right, so I've got airline A, airline B, airline C, All right, and then the totals. All right, so A, B, C, there was a thousand. That's how they're broken down by airline. And then whether they departed on time, were delayed, or they were all outright canceled. All right, so those are the categories we're looking at. All right, so for the first question is, use the data to find the number of scheduled flights from this airport that do not depart on time. Well, the biggest thing about this one is be careful. There are two categories where they do not depart on time, right? If you're delayed or canceled, you're not departing on time. So the number that are not on time, all right, there's two ways to do it. Either you can add up the delayed with the canceled, so that would be our 450 that are delayed plus our 150 that were canceled. And so that comes out to 600 and flights were not on time. Some of them were canceled, some of them were delayed. An alternative could have been is I know 400 of them did depart on time out of a thousand, right? And you could use the complement if you want to. You could take 1,000 minus 400 and you would get to the same answer, right? Only 400 out of a thousand departed on time which means 600 out of 1,000 did not depart on time. All right, and that's an alternative. All right, same table. Use the data in the table. All right, find the number of scheduled flights from this airport that are from airline A and do not depart on time. So I'm still looking at they're not departing on time, but this time I'm limiting myself to only, instead of looking at the entire table, I'm only looking at A. All right, so those two things have to be true. They're A and they did not depart on time. So I'm only limiting myself to these 200 flights. I don't care about anybody else. All right, so the number that are from A and not on time. So that would be the 100 that were delayed and the 25 that were canceled, or again, alternatively, 75 of their flights were on time out of 200. You could take 200 minus 75, and it should come out to 125. Flights from this airport were from airline A and did not depart on time. All right, the last, not the last example, but third example, All right, or, and I kind of highlighted it. Or, or is always the one that you've got to be careful of, right? Or is the one where, um, even when we're reading off a table, I don't want to count anybody twice. Right. Number of scheduled flight from this airports that departed. So this time I'm looking for those that did depart on time, right? Departed on time. Or they were from airline A. And some of A's departed on time, some did not. And so we're looking for on time or they're from A. All right, so it's the number of those that are on time minus the number of those from A, or not minus, plus the number of those from A minus the number that were both, right, on time and from airline A, because those got counted twice. All right, so I go up into my table and I figure out, well, how many departed on time, right? 400 total departed on time. We had 200 that were from airline A, but 75 of those were counted in both, right? This 75 was counted in this 200 from airline A, this 75 was also counted in the 400 for those that departed on time. That were also in airline A. And so I've got to remember those 75 people, or air, um, flights, not people, were counted in both totals. So I've got to remember to subtract it one time. All right, so on time were 400. Flights from A were 200. And 75 were both of those. So 75 flights were counted in both on time and from airline A. All right, so I take my 400 plus my 200 and I subtract away my 75, so that's 600 minus 75, so 525. We're on time or from airline A. All right, the last one. I use the data from the scheduled flights in this airport, all right, to figure out the number of flights that are scheduled from airline A or S. So another or again. So number of flights that are from A or C, but this one's different than the last one. All right, 
if you're scheduled to take a flight from airline A, so you're on one of airline A's airplanes, you can't, at the same time, be on one of airline C's airplanes. You can't be in two places at once. And so these are mutually exclusive events. I can't be on flight A and on flight C, right? I can't be a part of airline A's flights and at the same time be on flight C in this particular table when we're doing it, all right? I have to be on one or the other, all right? So they're mutually exclusive. So since they're mutually exclusive, there's no overlap. And if I go over and look at my table, you'll see that there is no overlap between flights from A. So I want all of the flights from A or all of the flights from C. And if you'll look, there is no overlap if I'm, if I'm looking at those two flights, right? Nowhere did I circle or am I counting the same things twice. They're mutually exclusive events. I'm either in the 200 flights, I'm talking about the 200 flights from airline A, or I'm talking about the 500 flights from C. I can't be on airline A and at the same time airline C. All right, so they're mutually exclusive sets. So I just take the number from A and add it to the number from C. There is no overlap, right? I don't have to worry about counting anybody twice. So there were 200 flights from A, 500 from C, and so 700 of the 1,000 flights were either from A or C. Another way you could have done it is use the complement. If I'm just looking at A and C, basically I don't want B, right? And so another way you can look at it is you could take your 1,000 flights, get rid of the B flights, all right, 1,000 minus 300 would leave me with 700 flights that were from one of the other two airports. That's another way you could have done it. All right, either way though, 700 is the right answer. All right, on your own, try one or, and this is or, that is not mutually exclusive, so make sure you're careful not to count the flights that were canceled from airline C twice, all right? So try that one on your own. And that finishes up 7-1. All right, so 7-1 is, again, nothing really new there. We just reiterated some of the things we talked about in 6, reminded you of the notation. The new terminology that we're going to be using is events can be set in place of subsets. Um, and we're going to be using tables instead of Venn diagrams, all right? So table cases are going to show up instead of the Venn diagram cases. So we practice some of those. In the next set of notes, we're gonna start into the basics of probability. All right, so that's the next set of notes.